Someone stands reading a book. A tattooed hand turns a page, glancing over spell after spell after spell. Another page is turned and reading again and again. Then a pen is taken and scratched across a line. And then a spot circled and then a spot corrected. And suddenly the ink on the page fixes the words that were written incorrectly. And it's been adjusted. Then the holder of the book turns and behind them we see rows and rows and rows of books on shelves and an endless array of shelving behind them. As a copper dragonborn approaches and says, uh, I got the ones you had asked for. These are very fascinating. Is there anything else I can do? And the woman responds, I think we're going to have some guests and shuts the book. And now you guys have just in time where you're at, you guys just stepped outside of a cave. Uh, and you grabbed a couple items. And like I said, there was a, a big pair of big pair of wings just soaring overhead. And, uh, yeah, you, you've all made it outside. What would you What would you like to do? First thing that Gallagher's going to do is he's going to put on his gloves. And he's going to say, uh, I think we should all recollect our, our, our senses and prepare for our potential journey to uh, well, wherever that hidden city was. And let's just hope those big black wings have nothing to do with Julian's existence being removed. Thoughts? Agreed. If that was quite eventful, it would be wise for us to be prepared as we head back. So perhaps we use this place as a cover and just hold off for a second. Okay. Also, go ahead. Uh, Gallagher's gonna look to Lorcan and say, "So, uh, do we do we just sit here and contemplate these these new these new goodies, or just gonna take take a short little rest for an hour? What's going on?" <laughs> <laughs> If you need to, um, <clears throat> I don't know, use the restroom or meditate or whatever you do as a monk, rain, you are more than what you once were. I was I given, a, I was given a lesson into my sleep. Uh, my my spirit, my astral form, took me on a walk, uh, showed me the beauty of trees and nature, and now I understand them more completely than I once did. I'm a ranger now. Howdy. Interesting. Um, well, um, Walker, um, if you wish to, um, yes, rest for a short while, I believe that would be quite um, efficient for all of us. And as we do, technically, um, you can sit with the things you may have taken and look into them more um, innately. So... In that case, Gallagher is going to begin, is just going to sit cross legged, place the gloves in his lap, and he's just going to end, just like, it's not, it doesn't look like he's doing anything. He's just going to enter a restful, uh, just like a restful sort of hunch over as he begins meditating to get those key points. And he will attune to the gloves should they be attunable. I will okay. also um, use my uh, arcane recovery. Um, in this time to just get some spell slots back and at the same time be curious about this book this spell book so yeah he will look into that as well and okay. attune technically to it if it is attunable okay bucket i'm gonna attune to the cat statue okay proxima is specter attunable you can certainly try and okay. find, find yeah, out I'll, I'll try for it and how about zeb yeah same 
yeah, Zep would like to attune to his dagger. Yeah, no, uh, Taika. <laughs> Taika is gonna just kind of like be sitting, kind of like studying the dagger, kind of like twirling it around because he he doesn't really like use a lot of actually sharp daggers. He's seen a lot of dull daggers in his time as a magician, uh, but he's <laughs> he's just kind of like being like, "What is this? Like, why why do I have this?" And he will also attempt to attune to it and try and figure out what it is. Okay, so. Uh, everyone roll an initiative check. This will just determine who attunes first, uh, so I can tell you about each of your items very quickly. Mm. Eight. It's mean five. Eighteen. Eighteen as well. <laughs> I also rolled an eighteen. Okay. Wow. <laughs> what? Just Gallagher then I taking a lot of um, So it was an eighteen, an eighteen, an eighteen, a five, and an eight? Yeah. Uh, so... On the 18, 18, and 18, what are your arcana? Uh, well, obviously. Yeah, so it's going to be three. Doc. Three for, for Taika. <laughs> yeah, mine's plus two. Okay, so. Yeah, plus eight. Taika. Jesus Christ. And then Proxima. That's actually, that's actually a low one for me. Oh, no, okay, you were the eight? or Yes. Okay, and then we got a five, four. All right, so. Yeah, while you're all resting, you're able to recover and uh, gather any bits of health that you would like. Uh, but as you're all trying to decipher what each of you have, now is the time for me to explain. So, first off, as you are digging through the book that you have, uh, you see that this book has locks on it and it is very unique as it covers all sorts of magic surrounding it but after a bit of time and research into it you're able to discern what this is and this oh, i'm technically hearing an echo in the background but that's okay this is the plain collars codex and with inside this book, you find the following spells. Banishment, Find Familiar, Gate, Magic Circle, Planar Binding, and Summon Elemental. Ooh. This book functions as a spell book for you, and you are able to use it as an arcane focus. On top of that, this book carries three charges, which it regains 1d3 expended daily at dawn. You can use the charges in the following way. If you spend one minute studying the book, you can expend one charge to replace one of your prepared wizard spells with a different spell in the book. The new spell must be of the Conjuration School. And I will make sure that that gets dropped in there for you in our chat. I I put it in my I, I put it in my DMD D &D Beyond right. too. So when you cast a Conjuration spell that summons or creates one creature, you can expend one charge to grant that creature advantage on all attack rolls for one minute. So you can summon something and tell it to go wild. So, um... Gotcha. Okay, okay, okay. I, I, was, I was confused about one thing, but now I understand. Um, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Okay. So, that is your book, the Plain Collars Codex. Then, you can see that he is, um, considering this is a conjuring book, there's something that he's looking at it like, this feels very familiar. Mm-hmm. Okay. Galileo, uh, snatch that out. Okay. And then next up, we find ourselves with Taika. Taika, as you are playing with your dagger, um, and I sent you this. Yep. Oh, yeah. It's already in my D&D Beyond. <laughs> you are playing with this dagger, trying to learn its properties. And as you flourish it, much like you flourish your cards, it activates. And it begins to hover around you as you become attuned to one of the cloud daggers. The cloud daggers are a set of 
three magical daggers that provide a perfect blend of power and defense to their user. As a bonus action, you may activate the daggers in your possession. Once activated, they begin to fly and swirl around their wielder. Each dagger in your possession grants you plus one to your AC, unless you had all three. As a bonus action, you are able to trigger one of the particular daggers in action and use its ability. You currently have the blue dagger in your possession, and you get a icy feel from it. And you would be able to utilize this and, as a bonus action, hurl it at an enemy, and once a day be able to trigger its innate spell hidden inside of it. But and you are aware it is one of many. Does that hidden spell deactivate it after I use it? It will recharge after a long rest. But if it, but if I use it, I don't get the plus one to AC anymore. Question. Uh, no, the the daggers will stay oh, active. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, it's just it cannot recast that spell. Great. And as as Taika sees this this dagger leave his hand and start floating around, if he just kind of laughs. <laughs> picks up one of his cards and flicks it up as a mode of potential and they start orbiting each each other. <laughs> he just kind of giggles to himself <laughs> as that happens. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Proxima, uh, next up in line, you are trying to attune to Spectre. Tell me a little bit about that. What are you, what are you trying to do? How do you interact with Spectre? I, I, Proxima, I think is just going to ask Vector. Where have you come from? I come from far, far away. How did you get here? That is a long story. But a wielder brought me here. And ultimately, they did not pass the judgment what as is... they have ended up like all the others. What is this judgment you speak? You said you were looking for someone worthy. How does one prove their worst to you, Spectre? They must ban and hold true. Are you worthy of taking life? Are you an arbiter of fates? And as you begin to Fuck. attune, <laughs> uh, as you begin to attune, and I'm gonna make sure that I get this over to you as well. This is going into the chat. Um, oh, actually, there's a specialty thing there, and I'll get it fixed to you soon. Uh, you recognize that Spectre, as they explain to you sort of their abilities, you learn that Spectre is a clearly magical sword, obviously sentient. But Spectre has a special ability. With inside Spectre reside souls. And you gain a plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls made with this weapon. Uh, it is a silvered blade with a long, it is a, it a short sword. And across its hilt, there are five circles and each one of them has a line through it. Whenever you slay a creature with an attack using this sword, the creature's soul is imprisoned inside the sword. And that creature cannot be restored to life except by the wish spell. The dagger can hold the sword can hold a max of five souls. For each soul imprisoned in it, your attacks will deal an extra d4 of necrotic damage. While the sword is within five feet of you, your dreams will be haunted by the whispers of the trapped souls. <laughs> But 5d4 extra damage, though. Cool, 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 cool. All right, all right, all right. There are two more abilities Spectre tells you of about it. 
that can be done with those souls. As a bonus action, you can release any number of those souls stored from the dagger to regain 1d8 hit points per soul that you release. Whoa. Kill a lot of people. That's your job now. That's your sole purpose now. You are you are an Get executioner. Get the finishing blows. No, exactly. We don't and kill anyone. We just like kill him. Kill him. Go. Spectre's final words are your judgment is based on my final technique. Technique. Sorry. Annihilation. If the sword holds five souls, you can use this special ability as a reaction immediately after you hit a creature with the sword and deal damage to it, you can release all of the souls inside of it. If it has, if the target has fewer than 75 hit points, it must succeed on a DC 15 saving throw constitution or die immediately. <laughs> Keep the five souls in there forever. <laughs> <laughs> So if you oh use that, God. it All eliminates right. every soul inside of the sword, though, and it will need to be restocked. Okay. And Spectre tells you that your judgment will be based on that. Okay. <laughs> what does Proxima do when she learns of the gravity of what Spectre is? Proxima's like, I'm going to need you to write that down somewhere because I understood like half of that. But okay, cool. Um, no, I mean, I think, honestly, I think Proxima, I think Proxima needs to take a moment because mm -hmm. she's embroiled now, but this goes against everything she stands for. Like, the, like she recognizes, like, as, as like a, a martial person, she understands the, the 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 care that this can take for the group but I, I think she needs to go like have a moment because like the imprisonment of souls for the good of the group is like that's not okay and I think she's gonna she's gonna put on her hood and mope for a second and try and figure out how to approach this there listen there's four of us if you kill power. us then you have five <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, so that is your interaction with Spectre. Bucket, as you sit there with the cat statue, how would Bucket try to attune? What do you think Bucket would do uh, trying to call into this cat statue? Uh, Bucket would get Plague out and like hand it to Plague and like they'd be like poking it like intermittently, just trying to figure it out, like looking at it, like turning it around and stuff. And he'd let Plague play with it a little bit because he doesn't know what it is. It looks like a cat toy. Absolutely. And at some point, you play with it, and you're just kind of thinking, and you're spending your time trying to learn it, and you're turning it over, and there's inscriptions. As you recall, it is a cat statue, and down one half of it, there are inscriptions written all over the left side, but the right side is pristine and un, uh, unmarked. And as you play with it long enough, suddenly you start to be able to read the inscription, start to be able to read the words, and eventually your brain just understands what you're holding, and you don't know where that information came from. But you know that this little figurine possesses wondrous power, as you do, in fact, hold a figurine of wondrous power. This is a very unique one, though. With inside this figurine, you know reside three feline creatures that you can summon. The first of which is a crag cat, a very large beast. It is a weaker, one might say, uh, of the cat family, but its ability to turn spells. If it is attacked by a spell of seventh level or lower and it succeeds the save, which it has advantage on, the spell will choose a new target the caster. So if it is attacked and it passes the save, a seventh level or lower spell redirects to whoever attacked it. Mm. Second, you sense another feline entity inside of it, a hell cat. Inside a hell cat is a small black cat, a small, small house cat, it seems, except for the red stare that it has. 
And if you lock eyes with it as it activates its death stare and you succumb to the wounds from the necrotic damage that deals to you, you cannot be resurrected. Your soul is absorbed by the Hellcat for nourishment. And it can always sense the weakest in a group. Translation, it can tell who has the least hit points always. And finally, you hear a roar inside of your mind and you can sense something a little bit more conscious inside. And you know that if you were to use up the charges of this for the day, there is someone inside that you could summon and you hear the roar of a tiger. Okay, so how how many uh, how did the charges work on this? So you are able to summon at any point the cats of the crag cat or the hell cat, and you can switch between one at a time. Okay, they are present. If they are killed, they cannot be summoned again until after a long rest, and they get to recover. And I can summon them whenever I want. Whenever you want. And what kind of action is that in combat? So in order to activate it, it will cost you a bonus action to summon one of them out, and then you will get to utilize them on their own turn in combat. If you don't want them in combat, you'll be able to just summon them out and about whenever you need them. Um, but it will cost you an entire action to summon the third cat that's inside. Gotcha. But Could they I too will take their own turn, yeah. Could I summon one now? Yes. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to use, I'm going to, I'm going to summon the Hellcat. Okay. And as you're thinking about it and playing with it, absolutely. A small black cat as the side with all of the markings on it glows and one eye glows red on that side of the cat. Suddenly a small black cat pounces out of nowhere and stands by your side. And it looks around the group. And it locks its eyes on each and every one of them. And then it sits and it just looks at you and it waits. So, I mean, I'm the weakest. I, I'm uh, I, I'm going to look. I'm just going to like hold it up like, you know, like like under its arms. And I'm just like. <laughs> it's like, um, I need a name for a cat, everyone. I'm looking at chat. Guys, what should I name the cat? Excellent. And we'll nab that name while they're coming up with it. <laughs> okay. uh, and you've got these red eyes staring back at you. I'm like, hey, those are my eyeballs. <laughs> and finally, it comes to offbeat as Gallagher slips on these gloves. And you slip them on and you start to work with them and play with them a bit. And finally, you start to understand. They almost reacted when that uh, summoning of the cat went to happen. And come in your way, you have discovered the Gloves of Counterspell. Ooh. They have four charges. They retain, they regain 1d4 charges after a long rest. As a reaction, you can expend one of those charges to make a special unarmed strike against a creature within melee range who is casting a spell if you have a free hand. When you do so, you're not actually making an unarmed strike. You are making an ability check using your spellcasting ability. And the DC will be 10 plus whatever that spell's particular level is always. On a success, you've canceled the spell and it has no effect. On a failure, you have hindered the spell by interrupting it. And the people who will be affected by that spell will have advantage on any saves regarded to it. And if it is an attack spell, you have granted disadvantage to their attack roll instead. So regardless, you will hinder the spell, but you have to pass in order to cancel it. It's got 1d4 charges of those per... It has four to start and 1d4 charges after a long rest will be restored. Okay. Uh... Question about, 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 so do I have to make an unarmed strike first to, nope. to hit or is it just the D or it's do I basically the, the gloves to... reacting to the summoning of magic near them. Oh, okay. Okay. And you will just simply be trying to snatch whatever is required to interrupt that. 
So it's not nice. a strike. It's just an ability check to see if you can do so. Excellent. Quick question um, yeah. about my thing. I'm pretty sure I know the answer. I just want to confirm. Uh, wait, what happened? No. <laughs> it went away. There you go. Um, um, any of the spells that are in this book that have a monetary cost still need that monetary cost, correct? Uh, they should, yes. Okay. But I believe it should still grant you access to several of them. I can't I can't use I can't use a good chunk of them right now. Anyway, I can have them, but I can't use them unless they were a scroll. Uh but okay. Cool. Okay, cool, cool, it, cool, cool. it removes several of those. Uh but because of that monetary cost, here's what I'll give to you. There is a page inside the book, scroll style for one of each spell. Good luck. You didn't F up on that one. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool beans. And cool beans. So, you all now know what your weapons do. Would anyone like to do anything and right now? Just so, just so we're clear, really quickly, just so we're clear, spell scrolls do not require material components. Correct. You're good to go. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You've just earned one page of each of those inside that book. You come across as you slip through. We're going to die. This is like the loot room before a boss fight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, you guys are taking your I'm break. You're tuned and you start to understand your weapons. Is there anything anyone would like to do? And I, uh, one counts. more question about my weapons. Yeah. So with my astral arms, I have a reach of 10 feet. Does that like reaction distance also extend to 10 feet with my astral arms out? Uh, yes, your reach will extend to 10 feet if you have uh, if you have that. Yeah. Awesome. We'll grant that Thank to you. you. Uh, my cat's name is Splinty. Or at least the Hellcat. Splinty. Is. Splinty. Splinty the Hellcat. So I'm pretty sure I have the least amount of uh, health points in our group. Yes, yeah, so Splinty's just dead staring you the entire time. And then I'm like, oh, hi. Hello. I just... Understanding summoned beast or not a beast he just looks back. That's a new friend. Okay. There's two more inside of this as well. Two. Interesting. Yes. Very interesting. You want to say hi to Splinty? He's gonna, I'm going to hold up Splinty to Doc. <laughs> he just smiles. Mm. Actually, do I speak? Do I speak? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, I mean, uh, telepathy is fine. I'll just telepathically say, hello, little one. Mm. He can't respond, but that's it. Uh, fifth, fourth, so fourth. Okay, so you've got Splinty, you've got this. So now, um, what uh, what would anyone like to do? Uh, Corso, uh, yeah, you you just said something in the Discord chat. I can see the other daggers somewhere. <laughs> Sorry, saw. <laughs> okay, gotcha. They they were in the um, treasure trove that, that we are only no... picked up one. Gotcha. Um. How is it like, are we just, are we just right outside? Yeah. Basically. Yeah. yeah you came outside and you basically took a break kind of near the white tree, essentially. Look, um, this, this dagger that I got, it's kind of part of a set. I think I'd really like to, to go back in there quickly and go grab it. So I'm, I know that thing looks pretty menacing, but you guys going to be good for a second. Cause I, I, I need this. If we're not fine for a couple of seconds, then we don't deserve to call ourselves as, um, what actually, I, I don't care, really quickly, what do we call ourselves in the graphic kind of order? Are we, are we, do we call ourselves pawns? Do we call ourselves, like, agents? Are we, are we stratospheric uh, so, beings? I don't know. Yeah, you know that you would be ranked as pawns. Um, but you also know that you are agents of Gravicon. Okay. I'm yeah, going to send cool. flag with him just in case anything does happen. Okay. Yeah. T 
Tyka takes off at a sprint to try and find those other two daggers that he missed and now feels really dumb about not taking. <laughs> yeah, and you can head right back in and try and find uh, uh, find the others. And you go back through and through the darkness. And again, things seem just different in here. The light is dimming down yep. and you Tyka find your way. snaps his fingers and a card starts going around him as he gives himself bardic inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and you set this up as you run farther in and you get back to the treasure door and you're able to push it open and walk in. And again, inside here is just stacks of treasure all throughout the area. But you remember that you had gotten these somewhat pushed aside from behind the door. And yeah. Yeah, he, he goes right right back to the door closes he, he looks around it he makes sure not to he doesn't like slam it closed uh but yeah. he kind of po pokes his head around to see if he can find find the other two try and find glimmers of green and red uh, anything and yeah you can see them sitting there they just got readjusted a little bit by the second opening of the door uh but the hilt is still sticking out of the red one and the green one's laying right on top of some rubies and gems and they do have that glow oh thank god okay come Come here, and he and he runs up and and grabs the two. <laughs> uh, yeah, and as you grab them, you feel that energy as they start to resonate together, and uh, as you do so, um, you know that these are belonging to the set. You have not attuned to these two totally. um, because you just grabbed yep. them, but they are in your possession now. Yeah. <laughs> See you guys in an hour. I'm I'm sitting down. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, uh so, so, yeah and taika just he grabs the two and if and he turns turns to sprint back okay <clears throat> yeah and you make it on back does anyone else do anything out there right now or uh gallagher's just finishing up his meditation just like on uh then to get get back those key points cool um Pro proxima has been like sitting like on a rock and she's been like spinning the hill of specter like in front of her just kind of like and um as uh everybody kind of like gathers back and she noticed gallagher kind of like coming out of it she says um since i came here i have had nothing but more questions and everything that i have ever believed and everything that i have ever known it seems gallagher uh, has been a lie and I do not know why I do not know what I am doing here uh, and she fucking sheathes Spectre just like in a cool move and she goes but I think my attitude is about to change and her eyes fucking glow red puts her hood back up stands up, is ready to go this isn't a threat is it? are you gonna stab me? No, I just I just like wanted the really cool moment. It's fine. Oh. I just I just feel like giving a cool speech real quick. It was it's very fine. cool. Thank you, I, thank I, you. I, I I've been like, I've been trying to work on it. You know, it's fine. I just like it. Just this uh, this sword eats salt. It's very confusing. I don't know. <laughs> hey Gallagher, mm -hmm. does a twenty seven hit? Oh fuck! Yeah. Cool. Please take seven piercing damage. Do I get the privilege of knowing what stabbed me? I hope it wasn't As me! You look down and there is a there is a an arrow slammed into your shoulder. Oh thank god. And you turn and yeah, you've just taken an arrow into the shoulder. Gallagher's just gonna look at it and he's just gonna he's gonna like break the shaft with his hand and turn around. Actually, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do I have a thing for this? I think I actually have a thing for this before before we do that. Um, I'm hit by a ranged weapon attack. I'm going to use my reaction deflect missiles. Thank you very much. Nice. I, I, actually, wait, is that is does that burn anything for you? No, that's just a thing. Okay, because I also have um, I also have um, fucking what is it? I need to find it. Jesus, sorry. Fucking yeah, inter I have interception, so I could uh, decrease your damage by uh, one d10. That's no, okay. No, I reduced. I thought I had I reduced five. the damage Here by. Uh, I reduced the damage by fourteen, actually. Cool. So you okay. caught it. I, I I feel the presence of like, and I just. How close are they to me? 
Uh, yeah, so you turn and you can see, uh, make a perception check. Uh, ooh, I'm good at those. And everyone That's else make a perception dirt, check too to know if you 20. saw that. Dirty 20? Yeah. yeah. You sense that and you caught it. We'll see if anyone else saw Dirty it. Dirty 20 as well. 21. Okay. okay. One second, sorry. I need to not. I can't, I can't use, um, dice, uh, digital dice right now. Sorry. No um, worries. And, uh, piss up Sean. Ooh, oh, yeah. That's a 24. Okay. Jesus. So, Proxima, you were talking to Gallagher saying, no, no, I think I'm going to. And then an arrow whizzes over your shoulder at him and he catches it. And you don't see the attacker because you're facing with your back to them, but the others immediately look in that direction and see a white haired, dark skin stars under his skin being from a distance who is immediately knocking another arrow and begins to volley them. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, uh, Before what? you do that, uh, how far away is he? Yeah, how far away feet. is this man? Hundred, you, 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 you did, you know, you were making him closer. You did this to avoid deflect missiles secondary strike. He's holding on to a longbow, my friend. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, Gallery's just gonna scream out and be like, gotta do better than that to hit me, old man. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone let me know. I need dexterity saving throws from everybody Good. near Gallagher. Good. Uh, I, I at this you point, Proxima, you would be uh, you would be looking at him. Um, Doc and Bucket would be within reach. Taika, you went into the cave. Have you joined the group yet, or have you just come out? I'll let you decide right uh, now. Say, so I Taika was sprinting probably as fast as he possibly could because okay. he, and so you you can decide whether or not I'm within range. Happy to make the save if I am. <laughs> All right, let's make a roll here. All right, I got a 16 for you, so that puts you out of range. Okay. So, okay, so the rest of you, Taika, you step out and you see Gallagher catch this and say, you gotta do better than that. And Taika, you with that unnatural 20 of perception at a distance are able to look up and see the other arrows descending from above. Everybody, give me that dexterity saving throw as a hail of arrows comes down. 16. Dodge. 24. I got a four. 18. Okay. I'm refreshing D&D &D Beyond. <laughs> so that's, that's how that works. <laughs> I Look, I'm not saying the RNG isn't a thing, but the RNG has not been on my side like the past week when it comes yeah, to D&D &D Beyond. Yeah, fuck it. I'm using real dice. Yeah, it's, yeah, real dice is happening right now. All right. So <laughs> what did we get for Gallagher? 24. Okay. And for... Uh, he got an F you. That's what he got. <laughs> Approximately, you got a four, you said? I sure did. Okay. And for uh, Doc? Uh, I got a 16. Okay. And for Bucket? 18. Wait. Okay. So, Proxima, you are going to take... That will be a total of... 11 piercing damage, and the others will take half of that for five piercing damage as other arrows come raining down, having been shot before the first one. I'm going to use my interception with for Proxima to reduce it by 1d10 plus three. Okay. Thanks, Bucket. Got you. Uh, how much you damage was that? Bucket. Huh? That was five. Five, and we take half because we made the save? or No, no, it was 11 for Proxima okay. 5 for you all who saved. All right, that's you don't a... take anything, do you? Or do you, do you have a vision yet? Uh, oh no, for you multi-class, never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that's a seven minus, uh, that's a seven plus three. So that's uh, seven, eight, nine, 10. That's 10. You, all right, you, so you, you take one damage as Bucket's Sick. barely able to not catch that last part. Thanks, Bucket. And at a distance, you have now all seen, uh, and even uh, we'll say at this point, you'll be able to see it too, Proxima, this attacker who seems familiar to both you and Gallagher holding a bow. Oh, he doesn't. How far away is he? He Are was at initiative? 100 feet. Yes. Are we uh, initiative? So yeah, if you would like, everybody roll initiative then, yeah? yeah I was like, yeah, we initiative? I was, I was like, we all want to, we probably all want to do something. <laughs> yeah. All right. 22. Oh, wait, I, Ooh. No, I, I rolled a 22 Ooh. first roll. I accidentally <laughs> rolled twice. Sorry. So 22. That's okay. Sorry. 22 for me. The 18 for Proxima. 
20 for Taika. I'm not showing off, but I am a time wizard. 25. Nice. <laughs> we all rolled really good. Good job, guys. <laughs> we do. We're doing great, guys. We're going to kill him. We got this, guys. When it counted, we did good. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so time wizard, you are able to go first. And oh, he is just, he is, he is 100 feet away from us. 100 feet away, and he has volleyed several arrows in your direction. Yeah, I, I don't. I'll go ahead. Go ahead. I have a question. This yeah. is this is continuity wise the same time frame as last session, right? Yeah. Okay, so then everybody don't forget that you have an extra uh hit points and current hit points you are increased yes. by five because I cast eight on you last time. Oh mm -hmm. I do have that. Oh, yeah. Yep. Right. So, that, that's still there. So I would yep. I, I still have all my health. Uh, okay. Yeah, what happens is, um, for now, this might not work, and it's okay. Um, he looks over as, um, I'm gonna call you Godshot, and that's not your name. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, as Gallagher, um, uh, gets hit, and then, we you know, we get the, the volley, and he's just, uh, I believe, wait, before I even say this, we haven't seen other than Gallagher and Proxima. This person is just a random person to us. To you, yeah. They've explained what they look like, but yeah, yeah. But they haven't. Have they explained, explained like any deep stuff with them yet, or just y'all know them? I, I, I told. I did say that it was the person who tried who who killed me in my. Thank you. And Proxima I did say I think yeah. it's my dad. Yeah. Gotcha. So we, we so we know them. Cool. Yeah, you know. Yep. Um, I look over and I say. The reason your father's trying to kill us right now. Um, and as they resp as Proxim responds, uh, I'm going to Misty Step 30 feet close. Okay. Actually, why would I even do? Wait, wait. Math, Mathiana. <laughs> yeah, 100 feet. That cut you down to 70. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to I'm going to rush forward 30 feet instead of using a <laughs> spell to do that. Okay. That, makes, that makes sense. That's fine. What a yeah, like show off like five feet. <laughs> uh no yeah i'm going to i'm going to walk towards i'm going to be walking towards as i say do you want to why are we fighting your father and as we do i'm going to turn back and uh time is going to coalesce around me for a moment and then disappear and then coalesce around this individual uh who is now 70 feet away yep Wait. Is it a 60 foot range? Wait, wait. I knew I was doing this for a reason. I am going to miss these steps. Misty step. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. But they're 40 feet away. I knew I was doing this for a reason. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yes, I am going to Misty Step. Um, yes, Misty Step come out of that as time is coalescing, and then it's going to attempt to coalesce around them. They need to make a constitution saving throw. Okay. Seven throw coming up. Con save? Yes, that man. is a 25. Good to know. The Bible said that's not okay. <laughs> um, you see, I think what you see is like their body like kind of like kind of contort just for a second and then they just break out of it as they're Make doing a their perception movement. check. That was pops. Okay. Uh, it was like in between one and something else. And I said, can't tell. I'm going to run again. It rolled a one anyway. So it's a one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Never mind. So yeah, you just do that and you, you do see them like snap out of it immediately. And I say, they're strong. I just yell that out. Um, and I guess wait with time coalescing around my hand. How did you know I'm going to be a time based uh, <laughs> okay. I think as as Proxima sees Doc like charge her father, she's experiencing a broad range of emotions, and so is Kate right now. Um, and so I think Proxima is just going to yell, "We need answers more than we need a dead body." Please Speak for kill. yourself. I was Please. about to say. <laughs> Please don't kill my dad. Thank you. Shouldn't have tried to kill me. That was his first mistake. <laughs> and at this point, 
you see the figure with the bow pull back. Oh, and then a dog comes rushing from the side that you Yay. didn't see before. And as it jumps, it slides to his side and suddenly they both teleport. Found a spell. You if can't. it's a spell. It's not a spell. Ah! As the dog drags them That's forward and you can see a blink dog as it <laughs> brings them forward. And he is now standing directly in front of your face, Doc. And oh, he, oh, okay, he comes towards me. Gotcha. Yeah, he comes right to you and he's got the bow drawn in your face. And he says, what happened to the dragon? Next up in the order, we have Bucket and Gallagher, both with a 22. Now, free actions, you are allowed to talk, Doc, but Gallagher and Bucket, who has the highest dexterity? I have a plus four and an 18 in my dex. I have a, I've got a plus three. You're more dexterous than I. Okay, so okay. Bucket does get to go first. You can okay. always like like say you go first, Gallagher. I know. I I I I'll look at Gallagher. I'm like he tried to hit you first. You go for it first, my best friend. But right before, just to respond. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, he'll say, "Wow, I guess you know when you have a brain fart, but like a real <laughs> one, like a brain shark just happened. Sorry, not to get gross. <laughs> um, <laughs> but he says, yeah, he says." We can have this conversation if you put that that bow down. Cool. How make close one. Is... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Make one more perception check. And Proxima, what's your question? Oh, I was going to say, how far away is Proxima from Doc and this guy right now? Uh, right now, so they were they were one hundred feet away, and then they bolted forward uh, to get right up to that forty that Doc is. So they are sixty feet from you. Um, um, I, uh, that, wow, y'all, I'm getting more coffee after this. 21. Excellent. Now that he's up close and you've got this bow in your face and you're looking over this new opponent in front of you, you can see underneath the part of his leather armor, you can see a brand on the inside and you can see the symbol of Gravicon. So and you I've can see there's a brand, brand on his skin underneath that is still there, but you also see the symbol of Gravicon sort of marked on him. It's sort of not quite hidden, but it's definitely in a way that's like, if you know, you know. Okay. And it's the last thing he'll say. Actually, 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 actually. Uh, um, Galileo is going to swoop around uh, Gallagher. Um, and kind of like land right next to them um, and just kind of hover next to them um, just to get help with aim if necessary. Cool. Um, uh, and uh, he will say, last thing he'll say, why do you have that brand? That's it. Cool. Gallagher. All right. Gallagher's okay. going to run up 40 feet. It's just like full sprint. He's going to be like, going to be like, you got terrible aim. You get worse with H. And then he's going to do some like some like Naruto jutsu with his hands and he's going to use his spell entangle. Um, and what happens as he does this, he like slams his hands on the ground and then these astral arms rupture from the earth and start grabbing at him, um, um, uh, stretching out 20 feet behind in a 20 foot square behind and like on the square that this individual's on. And, and as you as you start to summon that up, he's got the bow drawn in Doc's face and he turns over and he says something in a language you don't understand and your magic falls short as it's been countered. What language is it? Uh, it is in a mixture of, you speak celestial. I do. I do. Infernal. So do I. Uh, celestial, infernal, if anyone speaks that, which I think Proxima speaks infernal, yeah, right? I speak infernal. Okay, yeah, so it's a mixture of celestial, infernal and elvish so you pick up parts of it but he quickly laces the words and in a single sentence shuts yours down Choose um language. i speak two of those three i can i can probably shut that down counter spell so, a counter spell because let me i mean I, I'm yeah not, oh you can counter spell a counter spell yeah okay. i'm like you're the dm and i'm not gonna be like you know 
Yeah, I'm just saying like, his I'm... verbal component, like when he leaned over and just said some shit over your shoulder, you just Got like to. didn't understand what he said, but your magic just falls yeah, out. Yeah, I will kind of spell that kind of spell. Oh. I'm yeah. A, and I'm going to do it at third level. I don't know if we did it higher, but I'm going to do mine at third level. Okay. And he looks at you and he raises an eyebrow. Uh, but yes, that means your spell does take effect. All Sorry, right. I was getting coffee and I was like, no, you're not about to get a spell of me. Do it again. But what I think what happens is, uh, and I think the three behind would see those arms come up, begin to recede, and then time stops and just come right back as yes. he gets, mm -mm, don't I need that. a strength saving throw from uh, our from our boy here. Strength saving throw. That is a 23. Wow, strong. Uh, yeah, he's uh, he's not restrained. However, he is in a, a difficult terrain, if that's where, as, they, as the hands are like, no, stop. Yeah, <laughs> they're like um, reaching up to grab at him and start pulling yeah. on his like legs. Yeah. So did we hear him say anything to Doc? Because we like, obviously he's in Doc's face now. He hasn't fired. He's him. in Doc's face now. So did we hear uh, what he said to Doc at all? You know what? We'll just make it a simple perception check to hear if you heard that in the heat of this. It'll be a DC 12 to hear it. Cool. Yeah, Gallagher heard that. He just didn't care. That was cool. uh, I got a 17. You heard it. Yeah. I think Tyke is a little too far away. Okay. I didn't, but that works for me. Okay. Right. Uh, Bucket's going to use his bonus action to switch out his Hellcat for his Crag Beast. And. Uh, yeah, and, and then I'm you watch the as the small black cat absorbs into just thin air like a puff of smoke. And then that smoke reforms into a much larger white crag cat. It's like a saber tooth looking cat, huge white fur, and it is at your side. All right, I'm going to, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use its movement to have it run up 40 feet. So it's in range and have it ready its action to use its dash to run at this dude and use its pounce to get him prone if he does anything, but I'm going to, I'm going to shout to everyone like, wait, he said something about, he asked about Julian. Okay. And with that yelled out, uh, Bucket has used their turn to set things up. Uh, that brings us to Taika. And Taika, Taika runs up. So he's within, cause he's just coming out of the, uh, out of the yeah, cave I'm gonna to move up as well too, so. and, okay, and he, yeah. Excellent. he runs up to 120 feet and kind of and he he shouts in wait about julian uh, hey, wait julian sent himself to space jail but uh but and uh and uh, i will ready a hypnotic pattern um if and that will trigger if uh proxima's dad uh, does anything hostile <laughs> okay and he looks in your direction. And finally, it is Proxima's turn. Uh, I'm gonna use my dash to end up directly where Doc is standing. And Proxima is going to draw Spectre from where she sheathed him. Him, it, them, I don't know. Yep. Uh, and she is going to level the sword at her father's throat. And in Infernal, she is going to say, Tell me why I should not kill you here and now. And he looks at you and says, Is that supposed to mean something? Who are you? I... I'm the one asking the questions before I eradicate all of you. Proxima. What happened to the guardian who was here? Proxima. If you want to know what happened. Oh, I'm sorry, Proxima, you That's go okay. first. Proxima pulls down her hood to reveal her tiefling horns. She says, what happened to you? Are we, oh, so, oh, sorry. Is this all in Infernal? Yes. Is he Can responding I, in Infernal? He is responding in Infernal, okay. yes. Can anyone else speak Infernal? Okay, so Proxima and this guy are just having a conversation in front of you all. <laughs> and he says, Am I supposed to know you? Apparently not. I'm going to switch back to Common. I'm going to say, A friend here 
wants to know what happened to the dragon. Would any of you like to explain? Very kindly, he drew a card from a deck, and then he transformed into an orb, and then they disappeared. That's all that happened. Oh, I lower the sword, by the way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Taika pulls out the card that has the dragon on it, and just is, like, waving it 120 <laughs> feet away from you guys. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. yes. <laughs> I can, can we all approach right now, or are we still in combat? <laughs> Uh, so at this point, you've all set up things, and he's standing there with the bow drawn, still pointed at Doc. He then starts to ease the bow a little bit. Then you see him quickly spin around and snatch an arrow out of the air and snap it in his hand. As in the distance, you see a white-haired, dark-skinned, stars under his skin, man god fucking running David. forward firing arrows in a volley and he just snatched and caught the one that would have struck him and snaps it and he points and he yells in a very stern voice not right now you stupid and he turns and he lowers and shows the marking on his chest towards that person in the distance and that person stops and looks at him. Go back to the city where you're supposed to be. I do not have fucking time for this. You are going to explain exactly what's going on. And yes, that was an order. And he turns back to you and he looks you all over. And then he looks at Taika, who has shown the card. And he lowers his bow. And keeping an eye on Doc as he goes to take a step towards Taika. He just Isn't starts... he still entangled? No, he uh, never no. got entangled. Yeah, wow. he saved it. So they're reaching at him, but he kind of walks through that and he approaches and he reaches out for the card to take a look at it. And he doesn't hand it over, but he, he, he holds it up. The dragon's in here. How did he end up in a card and why is he in that card? He wanted to play a game. I wouldn't say he lost, but he's in here now. He said himself. <laughs> Who are you? Because you were not here when he was here. And he points at the other identical version in the distance who looks like him. Before we explain who we are, we need to know who both of you are. And again, why you have that brand. If you can utter the name of what it is, I'll answer your question. Gravicon, now answer the question. God damn it. And he stows his bow. And the dog that has been eyeing the crag cat, he makes a motion at the blink dog. And it sits down. And you hear him say, Galaxy, heal. <laughs> and Galaxy sits down. And he says, So, I am Nebula Gravicon. That idiot back there is also Nebula Gravicon. Just from a different time. And I know how this one is supposed to play out because I was here. This wasn't part of it. So, what are you doing here? And that's where the issue is apparently lying. I assume, and if you are what you say you are, you also know that those above 
or the powers that be would have did something at this point if this wasn't meant to be. And yet, an ancient copper dragon, gold brass, brass? What is gold. it? Brass? An ancient gold dragon was sucked into one of the deck of many things. And we're still here. And if you were here before this, I actually don't know what that means. We were sent here by Gravicon. The Gravicon Order. And this just so happens to be one of the many pit stops we happen to along our way. It also just so happened that a gold dragon likes playing very stupid games. Kid always was an idiot, but this... You don't just show up with a deck like that out of nowhere. That's not an accident. It was my fault. I made it somehow. It, it happened. It was an accident. There's something... You what? I'm, I made it. On accident. I was I was trying to ask for guidance from my god and the deck is what happened. It was the result. It was my fault. I take responsibility. Do not do not punish them for my mistakes. Do I know you? You ever had a kid? With that, he looks at Gallagher. And then he looks at Proxima. Proxima is staring at the ground. Like, she is just... She's like looking kind of at Doc and she's staring at the ground. Then she's looking at Doc, then she's staring at the ground. Then she's like, I can't. This is not the time for potential reunions if they're across the timeline. This is a, we need to figure out what's going on and what the solution is. And if you are an agent of Gravicon or if you are even above us, you of all people know that this is not the time. We want answers. That is what we want. From well, the what very I want to do is go back to Swirly Town and complete my mission so I can go back to hanging out with my astral self for all eternity so I can stop staring at this ugly man's mug. I don't care for answers. I don't care for anything. I want to complete my job. You want to go find the gold, gold dragon? Hop in this card. I'm sure you'll have a blast, murderer. You say that out loud? Yeah. Cool. Um, I'm just gonna go up to Gallagher and pull him away, and like give him like a like we can't talk about that right now. I understand. But it's like listen, we Gallagher, mm -hmm. roll a d20, no modifiers. Oh fuck. These are uh, always great. I can tell you from experience. <laughs> <laughs> that's a uh, that's an eight. Okay, and so as you say that and you call him murderer and he looks at you, your memory shifts a little and in your mind, that moment when you were assassinated, this person stepping away from you with the red shoes and the galaxy skin and the white hair kneels down at you and says I know you and you see them light their hands up with a white energy and it looks like they're going down to perhaps heal you and then you wake up in Gravicon anyway. 
are we still all with him and oh yeah Gallagher's he's he's gone? still he's still where he is but his origin of dying oh. and going to the astral plane and staying there for a long time that's over you weren't in there for years you went immediately to gravicon upon death you that still have your way. astral arms and it just says in your brain that gravicon gave you that ability Time is just altered. You no longer spent years there. And this person in front of you looked like they were about to try and heal you. And then you just got to Gravicon. I feel like I just got hit in the head. As being someone yeah. in yep. this party <laughs> yeah. who has had time changed on him, <laughs> do I recognize these symptoms as an actual doctor? <laughs> <laughs> You know what? You make a roll right now. This will be an Arcana roll. Uh, and it's a very, it's a 10. It's a fucking 10. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you see it. <laughs> you got what he said, murderer. And Nebula looked at him and went, you just watched it happen to Gallagher for saying that. <clears throat> I guess look over at Gallagher. <laughs> I could explain to you what just happened to you because I also have felt this but we're not going to do that what we are going to do is not reveal backstories or origins or things of that nature that will cause moments like this to happen again what happened I just told him that he stabbed me and then he healed me oh a lot more than that just happened Oh. So I do know you all. I'm going to, uh, when I'm actually going to, I'm going to uh, take some water. Uh, I'm going to take my water skin, uh, and I'm going to wave my hand over it, and time's going to shift, and I go, at what moment this was something that would be useful? It's going to taste like Theraflu. Um, <laughs> if you drink it, Gallagher, it's not going to give you any any healing, anything like that. It's just going to help. <laughs> it's going to help <laughs> the pain. <laughs> As I press it, digitize it. Excellent. Um, uh, and he just before we can continue with our mission. Were you here before we got here? Or are you also new? And when did they get here? And the one in the distance has stopped and is just like watching. And this one definitely feels older. Like something about a changeling and their ability to maintain however they want to look is one thing. But the way this one is carrying himself and he's just fucking pissed. Like this one in front of you, you can tell, has seen some shit. And the one in the distance that, like, he caught that guy's arrow, snapped it, and told him to just, like, sit the fuck down. It's just kind of, like, eyeing the situation, kind of, like, un unsure, because he sees himself, and he's not sure what's going on. Uh, but when you ask that question of, like, when did you get here? When did they get here? He's been here for a while, watching Julian, because that's what happened. And I in the time that I was at, just became alerted to Julian's absence, his very important presence, which is now just non-existent to those people. So I came to the last time that I knew Julian should exist. And there- So you are the response from Gravicon? Or are you just curious? I'm a little bit of a free agent when it comes to Graphicon. But... Okay. If He, not so much. But if you came to the last point, when you know that Julian was here, that means that after this, Julian was not here so 
wibbly wibbly tibbly wibbly. This is the last place that I personally existed with Julian. Okay, I see. I know because I was here. I can go to any other point and search for him, but this is a shooter. I literally watched the kid for years. In that, <laughs> in that case, why would we have we an issue? Him? We have a job to do, ordered by Gravicon. If it doesn't get done, bad things are definitely going to happen. However, you've come back here, and you seem quite capable yourself. Julian is entirely rescuable. Bit ironic that a dragon is a prisoner in a castle this time, but... (laughs) Why don't you go on in here, rescue Julian. We'll be on our merry way. He was watching him because a rather large entity like Julian deciding to set up shop in the middle of a random town is a very curious thing. So, someone was sent to investigate why and what as other creatures started to find their way here too. That is why I was here. I am here now because something changed, something affected my timeline so here i am but yes it would seem that that is an option but i do believe i'd need that card in order to do so how important that's not the question i want to ask at this point what is now the problem now that Julian is gone? Another ancient dragon? Worse? Is it going to hinder our mission now that Julian is gone? I don't know what your mission is, but I know where I'm at in time and Julian's absence is potentially devastating. I do not care to ask about your mission, therefore I do not compromise its existence. Proxima's going to... Go ahead, go. Oh no, I was just going to say, I think Proxima's just going to look at the group and, and say like, I feel like we are missing something so pivotal in all of this with, with Julian and, and, and the rest of it. And, but I, I just, I do not know what, I do not know. What do you know about Bramble? Or I should say, what do you know about what's on top of Bramble? Before that gets answered, yep. out of out of out of character, because some reason I have my notes and I don't have it written down. What exactly is our mission to get to that city get to the get to the area of time return the book return the book to the library return the book to the, mm-hmm. to the to library, library. yeah we have a means of yep. getting this book to the library now yes, yes. you 100 percent do mm-hmm. you have everything you need but if we do that then the town and julie oh my god i hate playing a character who is so I to no do it certain aspects. Right. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, All the, right. The question so, continue, you know? so mm-hmm. uh, from Taika, yep. what do you know about Bramble or what's on top of Bramble or another city that's near Bramble? <sighs> yeah, this is a weird, strange city, and there are many secrets to it that have yet to be answered, even in my time. But there is something here. There are many things here. And for some reason, creatures like Julian all throughout time, they're drawn to this area. And I don't know why. I think we have the answer to that question. Uh, Who has the amulet right now? Uh, Well, it was brought out by Julian and it was handed to Doc in exchange for drawing the card and then he drew the card. So Doc, you have the amulet of the planes. 
I'm gonna. Okay. I'm okay. gonna. I'm gonna ask Doc. To, uh, I'm gonna like ask Doc for the amulet. Like Doc, can I see? Uh, yeah, it'll flood over to you with my matron. This here. Do you recognize this? Yeah, it's an amulet of the plains. Well, we had a friend come through a door from another plane, very recently, in fact, and the gateway to that other plane is still here. And I think that is the key to what's going on in this town. And he just, like, holds his hands up to his forehead, and he's like, nobody came through a plane when I was... God damn it. Things Look, are changing. Obviously. I think it's important for you to note that we are agents of Gravicon. Whatever we're doing here is, will, is by their will and probably in order to change something in order to make sure that this doesn't happen in a way. Why? Why do you have that mark? And he looks over to you and he says a gift from Gravicon. But he says it very, like, snarkily. Can I write, roll a perception check? Yeah, insight. Yeah, that's the one. Could I also roll an insight yeah. check on that? Yeah. And I'm not, okay. not going to do that, but I'm going to wonder... Well, I guess I'll ask you, I'll say something, you tell me if I need to roll something. I'm assuming he's much higher than a pawn. Yes? Can I tell you, what? You for sure get those vibes. Is I he a crown? You don't know. His name is Gravicon. Yeah, uh, 22 is what I got in the insight roll as well. Okay, Proxima. I rolled a 14, but I'm Proxima is going to clarify at, at his response and just say, what did you do? And so to answer real quick to first uh, Gallagher, your insight check on like, the way he said that is he doesn't really consider it a gift. Not at all. Like, Crazy. he's just like, it's a gift from Gravicon. Mm -hmm. And he just like doesn't care like to talk about it or at least the vibe you're getting is just like, he is, I don't give a shit. He's very done. But to Proxima's question of what did you do? He looks at you and he says, I was exceptional. That's what I did. Look, I think it's very clear that whatever's happening right now, we're getting somehow played in a massive game by Gravicon. And we can all figure that much out not that much. I don't see why we can't all get what we want. You we go can. to you go and get the dragon from the card. We go and accomplish our job. And we can even take you with us. Because we just slip you back into the deck anyway. Or at least keep you on hand. Why don't you go do that? We didn't want him to be in there anyway. We can move on our way. This is what's going to happen. Because... I am someone who's very logical. I'm someone who's very intellectually based. Everything has an order. Everything has a reaction and opposite. Everything makes sense. And right now, nothing does. So let's just make it all be what it should be. Give me the card and I'll go handle that problem. And it does sound you have your own to deal with. But something tells me if you go in that card, things become worse. And I don't like things being worse. What and... are you insinuating? And let me ask you this out of character, because this is very important. What is Doc insinuating? You don't have to tell Nebula, but what are you getting at? Doc... If this is the timeline, there's like too many layers coming off the timeline right now. And so many are going to make a crash. Hey, I probably just watched a certain 
show about a god of trickery. Um, <laughs> um, but um, past that, Doc just doesn't think anything is lining up right now. So let's affect time to make sure everything is aligning, at least how it was beforehand. And oh, so I'm seeing Katie. I'm like, it's well. The problem is, I don't want to like meta game, but I have a genuine question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Is if if we send Nebula to go rescue a golden dragon and he is now on a different plane of existence, how, what would, be, like, I don't know how to ask that question, but, like, what would be the repercussions of brainer, like, planar travel in relationship to, like, Proxima's existence? I mean, you know, this dude travels the planes entirely. Like, the fact he's here is a different plane than where you're from. So you know this dude okay. travels the planes. Okay. That's a thing he does in his life. Okay, then I change. Then I change the question Proxima's going to ask. Okay, so as you are presenting this to him, Doc, you just asked him, "What if we?" I, I feel like if you go, things get worse. And he says, "There's always that possibility, but I've handled worse for a very long time." How long? Because you said your name was what again? Nebula Gravicon. Is that if a family all... name? Yeah. It's a name given to those who are exceptional. Hmm. It given to those who reach the end of the board. Ah. Gallic offbeat brain blasts because he's <laughs> proud of himself right now. I'm give himself a high five for remember for figuring that out. Okay. Anyway, Gallagher's just like mm. <laughs> <sighs> I'm asking questions and, and uh, he says yeah. Doc's actually says it out loud. I'm asking questions because there is something I can do that no one else here, including you, can do right now. I'm just trying to make sure everything lines up, that this does not affect our mission and potentially yours. And a voice calls from behind you. Oh, that won't be necessary. That idiot's got to go inside that card. Believe me, I know. And there is another figure behind you now who has white hair and starry skin. Wait, now there's three? looks <laughs> much older. And he does not seem to be holding that back. Even though a changeling could transform, this one has appeared and says, uh, Doc, if I recall, he's going to have to go on that. And the one before you looks over and goes, oh, my fuck. <laughs> He just looks at this one. He goes, so it gets worse. And the old one just kind of smiles at him. And, Apparently he, and he goes, just give me the fucking card and get me out of here. And this Tough. older one looks over and says, holds it out. <laughs> Go right ahead. And he looks and the older one says to you, but that is clever thinking, Doc. And as the current one reaches forward and grabs the card, he looks at it for a moment and he sees where Julian is. And he holds up an amulet that is underneath his coat. And he says, to the abyss. And he vanishes. Wait, so, 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 wait, wait. So one... The one that we we were just talking to, the, he, the middle the middle child, the middle child, just is now in the is, is in the back, abyss. Looked at where Julian was and said okay. to the abyss, and he vanished. Okay, not the not the older one who just got here. Now the older one, he's still oh. standing there, and he's looking oh, at you all. I and I, I look at older one, and 
This is, and I'm sure he is much older than I, but this is old man to old man speaking. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, but it's telepathically. Yeah. And I say, I'm assuming you know what I was going to do. Well, I know what you could do. There's a lot of coulds, a lot of woulds, a lot of shoulds. But I know what ended up happening anyways. And he went into that card one way or another. So that keeps things on track. And he looks at a thing on his watch. And this metal band on his arm with a glass thing on the front. But he's got five of them. And he says, and I believe you have somewhere to be. And he looks one last time over and at Gallagher and he says, sorry about what happened. Um, orders are orders, but it looks like you turn out well in the end. And to Proxima, he says, you'll get your answer soon enough. I didn't but you'll get yours. Just so we're clear, I don't know if I forgive you. <laughs> oh, I've seen it. You don't. And he begins to walk away. Does anybody hey. do anything? Taika wants to look at the card to see if he can see uh, Nebula in there. <laughs> yes. Middle Nebula. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, he, he so, just like just like looks at it, like at, at the little porthole window. <laughs> and as you're looking at that porthole window of the card, there is just like the shifting of this shadow and darkness in there. And in the distance, you can see the slight glow of a starry cosmos of a nebula. Yeah, he's he he's in there all right. All right, well, hopefully they get out. And then he puts it back in his pocket. <laughs> And you guys, uh, yeah, you could say something. You... Yeah, and I'll just, and I'll just, I'll, the, the mage hand will tap uh, Bucket and hold his hand out for the, for the amulet again. Yeah, Bucket will just. Yep. And it, it'll flow back to me and I say, then if we need to go, then we need to go now. Oh, and Bucket, Bucket the Bastard. Bucket the Glorious. That's one I haven't heard before. I speak out of turn then. But you'll get there. And he says... You are not wrong to fear. One who does not fear is someone who is dumb. And the dumb die. <laughs> that they do. And one day, that sensation, that thing, well, perhaps one day it will be dumb too. And he turns and he walks away. And as he walks away, um, I look at the, the four others to say, time right now is not on our side. We'll get more answers when we need them. But for now, let's go. Do Agreed. The, do we want to check the book first before we go? I would rather us check it on the way we arrive. Okay. Everyone on the cat. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to start as they as they all prep. I'm going to start speaking in celestial. I'm going to start speaking in primordial. Start speaking in elvish and all these incantations. Um, as I hold the amulet, I have to make a. Okay, I'm good. Uh, I have to make a <laughs> could not have been good. I got to make an intelligence check, uh, way above. Um, and I cast plane shift. What? And your destination? Uh, the destination is the, the 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 we saw the we saw I'm the sorry, library in the book though. No, we saw it through the doorway. That yeah, you guys saw through okay. the doorway. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From Wild Jerry. Yep, yep. Wow, well, my buddy that I don't really know. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, yes, I would just imagine that place and I say, here we go. Remember to be quiet in the library. Um, and I will cast Plane Shift to head out. 
and your whole group feels a sensation as if they're being sucked into a void and this thing pulling you in towards the center like you're being sucked in towards Doc. And then an exhale as you are placed right back to where you are. And you are all standing in a library. And there are rows and rows of wooden bookshelves around. Several of these shelves, though, are floating up in the air. They are higher and higher. Books are moving themselves from shelf to shelf. There are animatronic beings walking about, moving things from one place to another. Some seem to be documenting and writing things out of one book and copying things down on another sheet of paper. And walking past you all is a cat. And it walks right past all of you. And it turns. And it walks down an aisle. An aisle that is marked third and illusion. And that is where we end today's episode. I did have that in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> but of course we have to go somewhere else we see an old nebula walking their white hair a bit shorter than they used to let it extend. The stars under their skin just a little bit cloudier. Just a little dimmer. But the brand on their chest, marking them as exceptional, remains intact. And a being with a crown atop its head and several broken and jagged spires sticking out of the top of this crown looks to them and says, end of the line, old man. And Nebula looks back, unfazed, unamused, and a dog lays motionless at their feet. And Nebula responds, Oh, I know. For now. But I have faith in that which you cannot see. As the blood begins to run from his lips. And the shards sticking through his chest dig deeper. The being asks him, where did you go? And he smiles as Nebula responds to see an old friend. When you see my daughter, send her my regards when she kills you. And he falls and shatters into dust as he hits the ground. And the crowned figure says, Huh. Wouldn't have pegged you for the type with a daughter. Perhaps I'll go find out myself.